What's up guys, Rogue9 here. Blood Orchid is out for Rainbow Six Siege with loads of new content, changes and improvements and today I want to share with you my analysis of the new and more consistent damage drop off modelling. With the info from the patch notes and some first hand testing, I have finally been able to crunch the numbers and produce some insightful tables charting the damage drop off over distance for each weapon as well as the damage per second, the number of shots to kill against all three armor types and the theoretical time to kill also against all three armor types. Exciting stuff and as always you will find links to the individual chapters of the video in a pinned comment below. And with that, let's begin by taking a quick look at what the patch notes tell us. In the past, the distance at which drop-off started was pretty much unique to each gun, making it virtually impossible to understand the strengths and limitations of each of the weapons. With Blood Orchid, things have become much simpler. We now only have four different damage drop-off models that apply to the six different types of firearms in the game. Machine guns and designated marksman rifles or DMRs have the greatest reach with a drop off starting at 25 meters and ending at 40 meters. Then we have the assault rifles with 25 to 35 meters, the SMGs and machine pistols with 18 to 28 meters, and last and least, the pistols with a drop off between 12 and 22 meters. But it is important to note that there are a couple of exceptions to these rules. Shotguns retain their unique damage drop-off curves as does Glaz's sniper rifle and the Luzon because it's also special and the PDW-9 cause bugs happen. Smaller missions aside, this info is a useful starting point and my first step in analyzing the new modeling was to conduct a series of tests to confirm that these drop-off distances have been implemented correctly. And good news everyone, after a brief scare during which I hadn't realized that the pings no longer work on character models and I was actually pinging the wall several meters behind the player, um yeah, sorry to all those who saw my tweets and had minor heart attacks, I am thrilled to confirm that these 7 random guns I tested to double check the new drop off distances all passed with flying colors. So apart from my minor brain fart there, everything looks to be in order with one exception. The damage drop off for the PDW-9 seems to be bugged and I've already taken the liberty of reporting this bug to Ubisoft. Until the bug is fixed though, the PDW-9's damage does not in fact drop off, but instead grows from its base level of 34 points to a maximum of 35 points at greater distances. This results in the PDW-9 having some of the best shots to kill and time to kill stats at all ranges, but hopefully this minor issue will be relatively easy to fix. So so depending on when you're watching this, the bug might already no longer exist. Where do we go from here? Well, with reliable damage drop off curves on hand and now after running a few simple tests to figure out the minimum damage for all guns as well as the curves for the Luizon and OTSO3, we can now pretty easily chart the damage that each weapon in the game does at any distance and here are the results. If you're having trouble reading this table, fear not. You will find a link in the description that will take you to an online spreadsheet that you can browse at your leisure. What I want to do in the rest of the video is to briefly take you through those tables, explain what each one shows you, where the numbers came from and also highlight important takeaways. So this table, as I mentioned, shows you the damage dealt by each weapon as of the launch of Operation Blood Orchid from ranges 1 to 41 meters and beyond. The color coding is both to help group the guns in terms of their class and drop off patterns and also show the ranges over which drop off occurs, the sections in white. While mildly interesting, the real reason I created this table is as a stepping stone to gaining more valuable information and the same goes for this next little table which simply shows all the weapons again in their respective groups with maximum and minimum damage stats, rates of fire and the total drop off as a percentage of max damage. The general rule of thumb in terms of the drop off percentage is that the more powerful a gun is the greater the relative power reduction at distance although there are a few exceptions such as the OTSO3 which is powerful up close and keeps most of its power even beyond 40 meters and of course there's also the PDW9 which actually gains almost 3% in power, at least for now. The really valuable part of this table though is the rate of fire. 
Most of these numbers are simply taken straight from the operator customization menu in the game, but for the pistols and semi-auto rifles I had to establish the number via in-game testing. I tested about a third of the pistols, some powerful, some medium and some light, as well as all four of the DMRs and found that with the exception of Glaz's gun, they all fired at the same maximum speed. Using my video editing software, I measured the time between individual shots fired in rapid succession and found that the mode average gap between two shots, that is the most common one that could be consistently achieved, was 8 frames or 133 milliseconds. And that puts the rate of fire for all of these guns at a nice even 450 rounds per minute. The OTS-03 was slower and therefore a little easier to test and after all calculations were complete I came out at 225 rounds per minute, exactly half of that of the other semi-auto guns. Excellent! And now that we have the damage at all distances and the rates of fire, we can combine these figures to calculate the damage per second or DPS for each gun at each distance and here it is. As you can see I have taken the liberty of colouring in the table to give us an exquisite heat map. This allows us to pick up on some trends like for instance that the T95 and M249 significantly underperform the other two machine guns in terms of their damage output. This is due to a combination of their low damage per shot and slow rates of fire and the same applies to the Para 308 and Mark 17 CQP assault rifles. The two machine pistols, the Bearing 9 and SMG 11 have excellent damage output both at close and long ranges and again the same applies to the brand new Scorpion and the hard hitting pistols such as the LFP, the D50 and the M45. Although do keep in mind that for the pistols and machine pistols that I just mentioned, recoil is a limiting factor in terms of how far away a target can be before you start blowing most of that amazing DPS straight over the top of their heads and into the ceiling. Last but not least, the Luzon is also notable here for having the highest DPS of all up close, but quickly falling away to being one of the weakest once you get past around 15 meters. Consistently the worst performers here are the low damage high capacity pistols such as the RG15, the GSH18, the P9 and weakest of all the 5.7 USG. Given how OP Glaz's rifle was after receiving the target identification filter a while ago, the OTS-03 in the current build of the game is also pretty weak to compensate for this outstanding special ability. Moving on and using the damage data we can also calculate the number of bullets to kill, assuming torso and arm shots, for each gun at each distance against light armour targets as well as medium, heavy and heavy armour targets with rook plates. And if we again combine this information with the rate of fire for each gun, we end up with the theoretical time to kill at all distances, again assuming that you can hit all of your shots to the body at max fire rate. And the winner in this category, at least against light and medium armour, is Twitch's F2 with 122 milliseconds time to kill, up to 25 meters. Once you go up against level 3 armour or level 1 and 2 plus rook plates, the F2 does get crowded out somewhat by the hard hitting fast firing semi autos such as the DMRs and some of the pistols. Consistently the worst again against all armor types and at all ranges are the low power pistols, specifically the P9 and the 5.7 USG. All in all though the TTK stats are not all that surprising. In general the attacker weapons provide a faster TTK at greater ranges compared to the defender weapons and although some of the pistols can be very good at close ranges they do tend to suffer when you're further away. The times and rankings for individual guns shift around a little bit depending on the armor type of your target so for full details go ahead and check out the tables for yourselves. I also made a number of line charts that I hoped would help illustrate some of the info but they ended up looking a bit messy. This is one of the clearest ones which shows one example of each of the four damage drop off curve types plus the Luison and OTS-03 and it still ended up looking more like a map of the London Underground. Mm, yes, I shall take the 9mm C1 westbound to Cockfosters, change there for the northbound Luison line to Shepherd's Bush, then head east on the 417 overground to St John's Wood and Nelson's Column. 
If the new YouTube algorithm is listening in, I wasn't being rude, those are all valid place names in London. Hashtag don't demonetize me bro. And maybe one last thing to mention again before I sign off is that none of these stats take controllability into consideration. The TTK can only be achieved if you do not miss a single shot and beyond that control of your firearm also comes into play when going for headshots. No matter how short the TTK of your gun, if your opponent has better aim and control and manages to land a headshot on you, you will still lose the firefight. But that's it. Damage stats, rate of fire, SDK and TTK all laid bare. I hope that this info is useful to you and if you have any questions, clarifications, corrections, praise or requests for what you want me to test next, leave them in the comments section below. As always guys, I hope you enjoyed the video and I will see you in the next episode.